Okay, um, good morning from Anderson Forge on this 23rd of July 2019. Um, I can get right into it here and, and show you these uh, this matched set of knives that I was asked to make by a good customer. And uh, there's a couple things about them. And I thought it was almost kind of funny that uh, he asked me to do something that I very seldom do, but I did it because he's a good customer. Um, and I imagine I'm not a lot different from a bunch of other knife makers in this world. Is the more knives you buy, the more likely you are to get what you want. So anyway, this is, uh, these are what I call, uh, often referred to as an SOB, a short occasional Bowie. But these are even shorter than those. Usually those SOBs that I make are six and a half, seven inch blades. And um, these, he wanted just right a little bit longer than my average hunter, which I, I like my hunter blades to be four and seven eighths. Um, these are five and a quarter inches. He, he let me go a little longer. Um, these are five and a quarter inches. And he sent along a block of this is a rosewood, and right now I'm at a loss on um, on what what rosewood that was. Now I'm expecting a phone call, and I'm going to look at something here. Oh no, actually, this is the customer right here. I was trying to get a hold of Don Hansen, from whom I get this W-2. Anyway, the customer literally says, "Carl, they are badass." Thanks, I'm on my way to the post office in a little bit and we'll send you the money. Anyway, that's good. I thought it was, uh, the, there's there's something about this, this steel here. These are, um, anyway, this is rosewood that I got to tell you, when I went to sand on this stuff, it's like sanding a brick. This is some of the absolutely hardest stuff I've ever had to deal with either sanding filing drilling it's just really 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 hard which is cool because it'll it will really stand up to a lot of abuse so he sent the rosewood along wanted a match set him he does a lot of uh he's a pretty avid hiker and uh backpacker outdoor hunter fisherman he he gets out and he likes using knives working knives so and the steel is what is w2 real shallow hardening steel and this steel is what a lot of us refer to as DH3W2. That DH stands for Don Hansen. Uh, I consider him a good friend, um, ABS Master Smith, and I had a phone call into him. I'm just going to show it real quickly. This is where this steel starts. This is where the steel for these knives starts. Look at that. I can't see how big around that is. This is W2. And what I do is I'll cut, I'll cut a wafer off the end of that bar. And this is what I forge down to make this. And anyway, we use it because it's a real shallow hardening steel, which will result in these, what's called the hamon. It's a differential hardening. It's a transition zone from hard to soft. And it's always has unique uh, characteristics to it. And I had, don't don't be surprised if I get a phone call while I'm making this video. Um, I called Don just to have him remind me the origin the origin of the steel. He got a whole bunch of it. Imagine having these in 20 foot long bars, pretty heavy, eh? And uh, he had a whole bunch of those that he actually sold for a while. But I'm going to probably go back five or six years now. Don has quit selling this steel, so. It's almost unobtainium. If you have some DH3W2, what you got is all you're ever gonna have. So anyway, that's what I made these out of. And a lot of you are familiar with uh, um, my takedown assemblies, and a lot of times I have decorative finials and so forth. These guys just wanted specifically the straight up Socket head stainless steel, socket head cap screw fair, and I'm not going to take both these apart. Oh, there's one other thing they wanted too, which I'm going to show you. They wanted DH3W2, wanted, because uh, this these things might get bloody, muddy, fat, guts, who knows what could get in these. They just wanted the Allen wrench rather than the 
a decorative finial and he wanted something else which i'm going to show you a lot of you know are familiar with my takedown assembly and the alignment pins they wanted four pins so each knife has four stainless steel pins and they're free floating in there and maybe we can get a little fit on the guard and they wanted a high low guard they wanted to be able to have a have a thumb purchase on the top of the knife one of the spout the spine and the choil rounded which I did and this is this is one of the guards I'll just bring the other knife in here no reason to take them both apart this is the guards satin finished multifaceted anyway I'm dragging this out put our guard on this is a um, this oh low I got a low battery here hope I don't die I'm gonna screw this thing together and and uh, here's one thing I'm gonna hope I get it in there I like to leave the guard on the knife when I take the knife apart and push push away like that and then take the guard off separately I'm gonna screw this together and we're gonna call this video done and I might not get it together before the camera goes dead. I'm going as fast as I can. She's locked up tight. Here we go. We've got four video, two knives, W2. You guys have a good one. Thanks. Okay, I'm going to make a quick little video here on this steel that um, whenever you see a, a knife that I make and it's got a hormone and I refer to it as DH3W2 the DH3 of course stands for Don Hansen the third and it is W2 tool steel this is the condition that this steel comes in this is I mean you can see this is a large heavy round piece of steel I don't know what this weighs 10 12 pounds or something and of course I you know cut it off into pieces like this this will forge this would make a big buoy or buoy or forge it out get a couple hunters out of it but here's the the I'm sorry I'm moving my camera around here um, the origin of this steel um, I'm gonna add this video to a, this video to a video I just made and then I'll probably also just um, upload this as a standalone video on my YouTube channel but the origin of this steel is um, Don bought somewhere between 25 and 30 thousand pounds of this steel you know imagine 15 tons of it in 20 foot bars and the it was made by Tremblay tool steel which is a steel company in Ohio um, somewhere in the 80s so this steel you're looking at is you know 35 years old at this point um, and it was it was a uh, it was being used by General Motors and what they would do is they would take this stuff and of course they even had you know they had large rounds of it and this is just happened to be the stuff that Don got but they would forge die molds you know for um, body parts it was like if you're gonna you know shape a a car door out of steel it's pressed we you know like a, a male and a female form would go together and it would press the the sheet metal or whatever other car parts between them to create this their desired shape well as time went and Don even talked to the guy who was in charge of using this stuff the uh, metallurgist and uh, is making the dies and the machinist and the guy that was in charge of all that and they liked this because it's real shallow hardening so they could have a you know a die that might be an inch thick or 
or um, who knows how thick the dye would be, but when the, it would, it would, this is, I don't want to get, I'm stumbling on whether to go into metallurgy or not, but it's shallow hardening, meaning that it doesn't harden real deep so that they really like this stuff because it would just, just the outer surface of the dyes would be hard. And under that, underneath that, see, it might only harden eighth of an inch deep. And then underneath that would be soft enough that it would act as a cushion and they would get a lot less breakage that way and they could weld to it and they wouldn't get fra fracture cracks when under high pressure and so forth. So they really like the W2 shallow hardening. Now, it, you know, when you consider that it might only harden an eighth of an inch deep, well, if you only, if you have got a quarter inch wide, quarter inch thick, knife blade and it hardens an eighth of an inch then it's fully hardened from each side because you're hardening from each side anyway then advancements came in as they approached the 2000s and they and it wasn't just general motors it wasn't just because general motors had this but see this would require um their metallurgy departments to this requires austenizing in heat and quenching well they went the entire auto industry went to sort of a cleaner methods and what they went to air hardening steel for their dyes which a lot of my knife maker friends will know you just you get it real hot and as it cools off in still air it hardens so they didn't have to have you know large quench baths for dyes and stuff like that and it, it changed anyway it changed the way they made their dies. They no longer needed this steel. And Don bought was buying this stuff three and four tons at a time till he bought up, um, you know, 15 to somewhere between 15 and 20 tons of it. And he sold a lot of it. Um, he has not sold it now for a very long time. And he got down to the point where his reservoir of steel that he had left he's just keeping for himself and i mean he sold he sold tons and tons of this um so anyway i'm i'm glad i've got what i have and any of you people out there when you're when you're seeing knives that are made from dh3w2 know that you're getting some special steel that you know it was made to a real to um automotive standard alloy <coughs> excuse me um and this is all there is. When it's gone, it's gone. Okay, that's where my W2 tool steel, W2 tool steel comes from. DH3W2, have a good one.